You're listening to Don't Take Bullshit from Fuckers with your hosts Greg Barrett and Kane Holloway. You have an update? Really quickly. Okay. Uh, somebody asked me for their money back on Venmo. <laughs> they did. Yeah, Jared, I've been blowing up on Venmo. Uh, okay. That's my platform. That's the one. Yeah. I <laughs> that's and the one uh, like. and uh, and so I've asked people to you know hey hit me up on Venmo add me as a friend and if you want to sure. send me, you want to send me some money send me some money I don't care. It's fair <laughs> enough. It's it's or if you need five bucks ask me I'll send it to you. Wow. And uh, I had somebody send me 10 bucks and then they just, today they asked for it back. <laughs> it's going to be funny if, they, if this was just what they, this is the relationship they wanted with you. Just, we're going to go keep going back and forth with this $10. This yeah. Just back that's and it. forth. Maybe that's the rest of your life with this person. Yeah. Back and forth. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, uh, I like the idea though, that maybe it's not that and that they're really hard up for that 10 bucks. Like they did it as a joke. And then they were like, shit, I really need that $10. I think that's, I, I think that might be the way it is. I think so. <laughs> I think they really did need like, fuck, that was funny for a minute. Now I need that fucking <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think he needed it. They're, they're I probably thinking, I thought he said no. Yeah, I should have sent him 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That would have been good. In good faith. Like, keep coming back. Keep coming back to Greg's Venmo. Yeah. Well, 15 with the, the idea of never do this to me again. You've, uh, you know we've monopolized my time here <laughs> it's true that's very true yeah not enough people what we found is not enough people will plug their venmo um no one ever plugs it uh and greg one day decided hey man that's my platform that's just where i want to be famous i want to be known on venmo and uh it started to blow up and not only for him but i got residual payments just mm. for being in the room this is nice. It's uh, it's not a real good way to build a retirement, but it is a good way <laughs> to you know get a cup of coffee uh, you know without having to pull out your own wallet. I think that's that'll get you a couple Starbucks rubs. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I always say that to people. I always say it's people. I got because I do Patreon, and sometimes people go, "Yeah, let me just like toss like because I do dating." you know, I'll talk with people about their dating lives over Patreon. And the, you know, I'll get DMs that are like, hey man, um, I got a problem right now. I'll, I'll throw you 20 bucks on Venmo. And I'm like, that's not what my goal is. Like 20 <laughs> bucks on the counter on your way out. <laughs> like some, you know, cheap fucking thing. You know, like I, I was like, I want you to be a fan. I want you to enjoy my stuff. Like me giving you advice or talking with you, talking about your dating life with you. I mean, that's, that's fine. You know, that 20 bucks, like, what do you think I'm doing with these $20? Like, no, I want you locked in month to month, mm -hmm. five bucks a month, a part of the greater community. I want you a fan 10 years from now. So it's like this idea that I could just be that 20 bucks will get you where you need to go. Like that doesn't get me where I need to go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Do you, have you thought about charging for uh, your relationship advice? I do. I give uh, for 15 bucks a month. You can sign up on my Patreon and you get one question a month and I go back and it's a really in-depth, like I give like really like my thoughts on their situation. And I, I'm not an expert. I'm not a professional. I'm just someone who's willing to hear you out. And because they listen to the podcast and they have heard the way I kind of, you know, will listen to people. They kind of trust. And I, I think a lot of people like you know, this, like, just like you go to your friends, you, 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 judge your friends based on your history with your friends like well you're thinking of me when i was in college you're thinking of me when you knew me when this is different now and you don't really trust your friends to, and even if they're good at advice so i think it's like a third party where they go it's it, it just nine out of ten comes down to am i being crazy and usually they're not being crazy but maybe their perspective could you know there's another perspective that could come in to help them out uh, yeah, I didn't know that about your, your Patreon. I knew you had a Patreon. I listened to uh, the Luxury Lounge episode, like one of the most recent episodes you did, which I thought was such a great idea of like complaining about something like in the high end. Yeah. Like, having a complaint. I love that fucking idea. 
we were doing so much dating stuff that I was like, I got to stop talking about this, but then I like complaining. So I was like, in the same way, I like complaining about someone being like, let me give you $10 on Venmo. Like, like that's a luxury problem. Someone wants to give you $10. I'm like, well, that's not the type of person I want in my life. I want a reoccurring income that can be like a pension. So I don't have to, you know, if the world goes through a pandemic, I, I can have something to lean back on. And mm -hmm. so I, I said to people, I was like, uh, you know, like the luxury lounge is basically people come in, they have a luxury problem that they might be embarrassed complaining about. And I'll complain with them. I'll do a douchey duet with them. We'll, we'll <laughs> sing together. And, uh, you know, stuff like, you know, I, I got to get out. We had one where I was like, I got to get out of my car sometimes because I pull up to the parking garage ticket thing to get the ticket. Then someone wrote back and I was like, yeah, that does suck. Uh, then someone wrote back, make sure you put it in park. I know someone who got squished to death from doing that. And I'm like, oh my God, like <laughs> that's the most horrific thing I've ever heard. And then Jesus. you're like, well, I, this actually might've saved lives. Now, nobody who listens to that or this will forget, put your car in park. If you get out at the parking garage to pull the ticket, you oh, yeah. get the squished ticket. to death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. I, I love that. What I, a uh, dumb way to go. I know. I, I, yeah, I, the whole time I'm dying, I'm going, I would be thinking, my mom's gonna give me shit about this. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> My whole family would expect it. They'd be yeah. like, yes, of course. <laughs> exactly how he died. Of course it is. Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a, I have a luxury complaint um, now that I think about it. So I went to one of the only uh, uh, movie theaters that are open is the Lemley in North Hollywood in California. And Did you go I, see a quiet place too? No, I went and saw Cruella. Look at that. And Cruella, uh, pretty good. Actually, pretty good. A lot of needle drops. Like, most... yeah, I've heard an excessive amount of needle drops. Except it's so many on the nose songs. Like, she fucking, uh, like, just, just songs. I, I can't even think of an example right now. But anytime, like, she gets empowered, there's like a needle drop of a song that's <laughs> like, uh, what a girl wants, what a girl needs, you know, that kind of shit. <laughs> and it's constant throughout. But here's my thing is like, I went to the one place that doesn't, all the, the my favorite theater is an AMC because they have um, the soda dispenser where you can make your own drink. Like you can essentially get your own soda. Like they have uh, different kinds of Sprites. They got raspberry Sprite, orange Sprite. I used to like concoct my own little Sprite. I go to this one movie theater, the, the only one that's showing movies, they don't have that. You got the one Sprite and the guy's got to do it for you. I, I, I was annoyed. I was annoyed. Oh, especially when you're used to the creative liberties that you get to have on your way into watching someone else's creative liberties. You know, you, yours, exactly right. yours is a way poorer version. But listen, at least you can say you're an artist as well. It's right. not just, yeah, there wasn't just the movie maker. You know, listen, Disney's nice, Cruella, Pin Drops, but you got to be your own sort of Picasso. Thank Before you. Before going into the theater, that you're, has been stripped from you. You're just another, you know, Jim and Joe heading into the, the theater. You're the Zack Snyder of your Sprite. Yes. <laughs> you, can make it, you can make it as dark as you want it. Yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. right. Absolutely. That's right. It was taken away from you. A moment to be an artist. And Unbelievable. They wouldn't even allow that from you. The guy behind the counter gets to be the artist. No, that's hard. Yeah. Yeah, and he's telling me how to hold the cup. He's like, he's like, grab it from here. Don't grab it from the top. It's like, I'm 34. Yeah. Don't talk to me like a child. I like to live on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> if I want to spill my Sprite that you poured me, I'll spill it, God damn it. <laughs> I love the needle drop review because that was probably the most L.A. thing I've ever watched happen for me in my entire life is you going, a lot of needle drops, and Greg <laughs> going, I heard that, and I'm sitting here going, I have to Google the definition of a needle <laughs> drop right now. I don't even know what the fuck they're talking about. Oh yeah. It's just like once <laughs> this person has a, has like an idea, a song will start and then yeah. it'll move on to a, to a culmin, like a, what's it called? It's a bunch of different scenes culminating montage. into a montage. Yeah. So they'll have like a montage. And so it's just like, I would, and it's, it's all like seventies music uh and everything everything is made to look like dalmatians black and white uh it's like an action girl power movie but what i think is very interesting about this is that 
Cruella doesn't take bullshit from fuckers, yet her, the end result is she gets to a point in her life where she wants to skin puppies so she can wear a coat. <laughs> I don't know what the I don't know what the uh, the the message is. Pride will take over your mind and turn you into the 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 villain. Oh, ooh, that's pretty good. You can't hold on to your pride too much. I wish we had a needle drop right now. Can we move on to the next segment with a needle drop, Pat? <laughs> uh, we got us a we got us a question, guys. Uh, this comes from Claire. She says, "Hey, Greg, Kane, Pat, and of course Jared, I love your podcast so much, and it makes me laugh a lot each week. I've been dating someone for a couple of months now, and when I met him through work, he had recently come out of a ten-year relationship." that he said he wasn't happy in and had been over for, and it had been over for a long time. At the beginning, I was very patient when he talked about their relationship a lot and when he did a lot of comparing. After several weeks, it was getting a bit too much. I said, while I wanted him to be honest with me, I felt we needed to focus on us and he agreed. He also mentioned previously, he has thousands of photos of his ex on his phone because she used to get him to take 30 plus versions of the same photo of her and she wanted to use his phone because it had a better camera. Uh, when he said they kept popping up on memories, which he felt was weird, I told him about the hide feature on the iPhone. And a few days later, he said he had hidden photos. Several weeks passed and he mentioned he had hid 300 more photos of her today. This made me a little bit frustrated because as I explained, I couldn't see his end goal with these photos. How long was this sporadically hiding them going to go on for and keeping them now? They are definitely over and not in each other's lives at all. Uh, he said when he left, she asked him to keep them because she wanted copies of them. Also, also he feels bad not keeping them and not keeping to his word and doesn't want to be a bad person. Uh, I feel that she can't expect him to keep those photos for months on end until she decides she wants them. Now they aren't together. After talking about it, he said he would delete them, but I feel like he's just doing that for me. And maybe I'm just being a fucker about it. I always delete my photos of exes after we are definitely over. And especially when I met someone else. So I can't really understand. I would love to know your thoughts. I got lost. How, how long was that letter? It was pretty long. <laughs> how long okay. were they together? The, oh, like, wait, like, what's the, the sequence of events? Like, 10-year relationship, and then they've been together for two months? Like, did it yeah. end and they got right together? Or, like, also, it's work? Yeah, Alyssa, it's been it a couple months now when I met. We met through work, and he had recently come out of a 10-year relationship. Recently, so maybe, like, a few months after his She's dating recent... someone who isn't ready to date. Mm -hmm. And she's the easiest person to date. They met through work. He didn't even leave his job to find someone new he found someone who is the most like ready and willing and able and the reason she's like happy in this because the first two months because he treats her like a girlfriend and not like someone he's dating so he that's the only way he knows how to kind of court mm -hmm. and then he's sitting in there and he's talking about the old girlfriend because he should it takes time to get over an old ex and stuff but he's not really given himself enough time to even like do all the things like you know, her being like, you got to delete, like, she can't really have a right to those pictures. Of course, pictures are going to come up. Of course, he's going to talk about the ex. 10 years. What else does mm -hmm. he have to talk about? That's all his memories. I can't, what's he going to talk about the time that he like doesn't hang out with her? Like, in those <laughs> days, I don't know. It's like, like, oh, in high school, I used to do this. I, I just, to, to me, it's like, she's trying to like squid a, uh, fit a square peg in a round hole at this point, because he might be there for her, but she's not getting the, her own girlfriend experience because he doesn't really know how to do that yet i don't think yeah but also his he had no he, the struggle with those fucking photos is easy delete them that's it sure mm -hmm. then uh, say he send them to send them to her and then delete them right that, then even what even when he, he had says, to have explain how to hide them on the phone and then they kept coming up and he's just dragging his feet right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i and, and also like the idea that like but then he says i'll delete him and she goes well i think he's only doing that for me because it's like because i asked him it's like it's like i want you to want to <laughs> to go to dinner or something like that and it's like 
I think that's just someone she's not comfortable in this relationship. She knows he's she's kind of dating a guy doing the things that, that for the old girlfriend. Like, I don't know. It just doesn't feel like the like when you meet through work, a guy out of 10 years, it's like you you've kind of met someone in the simplest, most I ran into because I would have run into you way. Like there was no effort made. So she's now getting upset that that effort, you know, never really like she never doesn't feel desired. She feels that she kind of like he fell back into her and now he's got all these pictures and his old stories with his ex. It's like, what improvement has he made? What changes he made in a 10 year relationship? You got to look in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. Like I think we all have to after a breakup. Yeah. Not enough time has passed uh in in this for him to have a full understanding of who he is to move into the next relationship we had a whole discussion about this over the weekend um through a workshop where people are trying to figure out what they're going to do in the dating world immediately after an intense relationship like that and it's like well after going through my own you getting into the dating world was not only uh a lot but also uh i didn't want to i didn't even want to do it i just kept doing it because people said i should you know i had girlfriends trying to turn me into a fuck boy and other girls were like telling me like oh this girl would be good for you and i'm like oh i don't want any of them i don't want any of them i i, I just i think i just want to be alone and i think if this guy is like falling into a, a new relationship right away this guy doesn't know how to be alone because he's still, like Jared said, stuck in his own relationship. If he's not willing to delete the photos, that's the, the main reason is, is he's not out of the woods and he's not, he doesn't know what he wants. And, uh, and a, new, a, new, a new relation, you shouldn't be the testing ground for a new relationship. Yeah, what Greg said was right too, just like the idea that like, it's an easy fix, like, oh, I'll delete them. And mm -hmm. it's like, he didn't even, he has to go through like, well, settings and Apple maps. Like he's going to have like a <laughs> whole thing. He's, he's going to, and my girlfriend, I would feel bad. Like the, the minute she said he would feel like a bad person, that is a very post breakup way to feel. Like yeah, if you're still like, kind of like cleaning up the ship behind you as you move forward, like, I, I don't know. It doesn't feel like he's out. Yeah, no. Yeah. The, uh, and I feel for him taking 30 plus photos of the same. What's oh, funny too is like, he'll be like, he as much disdain as he has. I mean, it's kind of right there. As much disdain as he has by saying something like, oh my God, we'd sit at brunch all day and we would take 30 of the same <laughs> fucking photo. And she's like, would you want to delete them? Show me how to hide them so they can come up later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to make her mad. Uh, well, you sure. should have been mad when you were doing an hour photo shoot you know like what <laughs> yeah exactly um yeah man if this guy's not like fully this guy's not ready i would have a bigger discussion with him about the idea of him wanting to be in a relationship well the picture is the the picture is just like the the groundwork for a bigger conversation you're green we'll be green. right back Hey, if you're a writer, performer, or creative in any way, then you might benefit from my coaching program. I've written several best-selling books and toured the world as a stand-up comedian and started a band called The Rainy Monarchs. Whatever creative path you choose but feel stuck on, don't worry, because I can get you unstuck. For more information, go to gregorybarrent.com coaching and sign up. You'll also find this link in the show's description. And I can help you if you have relationship problems as well. This is the theme song for what does this mean song. The theme song for what does this mean song. We'll read a self-help quote and they're definitely not memes. Memes are something completely different than quotes. Quotes are supposed to help you through all the bullshit in your life. And memes are like uh, that poster of that cat hanging from a tree. And it says hang in there baby or Monday. Am I right? Mondays, am I right? So if you can think of a different 
title, then we'll probably change it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Love it. All right. Greg, do you got one today? I do have one. Okay, what do you got? The best revenge is to be unlike he who performed the injury. Marcus hmm. Aurelius. Oh. Yeah, check that shit. <laughs> to be like he who to not be like he who performed the injury yeah yeah that's pretty good it's all right yeah that's not bad it's all right you're never gonna remember it yeah no probably not does that grab you jared can you repeat it again the best revenge is to be unlike he who performed the injury okay i get that mm-hmm that makes some sense to me, right? Yeah. Don't be... I had to say it twice. Yeah. The second time felt good. I... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that's... Are we, we're debating what this person means? We just... We're just trying to debate whether it's a quality... Like when you're scrolling and then every once in a while you'll yeah. see uh, an inspirational quote that'll make you feel like, oh, that's awesome. And that uh, one, yeah, that one won't help me. I, I understand it. There you go. It doesn't go. really, it won't help me, but I do understand it. Like they're saying, don't act like the person who, who is the douchebag, which, you know, to me, yeah. that is a better ring to it than, you know, speaking like we're in Renaissance fair time. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like I, I had to like dissect it a little bit, but I do like, the the thought makes sense like hey you know but that to me it should be obvious i don't know if anyone's going oh like <laughs> i shouldn't act like the person who's literally injuring me you yeah know? Like, <laughs> yeah fair enough yeah yeah um i got one here that says go easy on yourself whatever you do today let it be enough so nothing yeah. <laughs> that's my favorite that's my favorite influencer is the one that tells you doing nothing is good you know like they get paid they got a deal with someone they're like you know as my good friend the crest corporation told me um don't worry about the things you're not doing you'll get to them tomorrow and it's like well yeah i'll get to them tomorrow while well, you you know, hustle your ass off to get Crest to pay for this weird, you know, like thing. Mm -hmm. I, I do think like everyone needs to take a break every now and again, but mm -hmm. sometimes it gets so far down the road. They're like, yeah, take a break. You're doing enough. And it's like, well, I'm on Instagram reading this. I'm obviously doing this instead. I am taking a break. This is legitimately <laughs> a break right now. Yeah. What is it? Tell, read it again, uh, Kane. Um, Go easy on yourself. Whatever you do today, let it be enough. Yeah, that sounds like something I'd say to my wife. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that. I feel like that's mainly for people who uh, try to accomplish a lot all day. Perfectionists and shit who try to just like, all right, we're waking up and we're gonna carpe diem. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. I'm gonna work out in the morning smoothie and then we're gonna and then it's just like this fucking day plan and at no point are they gonna deviate from it and they always feel but you always constantly hear the idea of burnout from people who are perfectionists but that's the problem the burnout people their algorithm doesn't include hey take a chill pill for every now and again like <laughs> their algorithm is all hustle till you bleed get it mm -hmm. while you can early bird gets the worm there's no like the, that, that's the issue with algorithms like this algorithm would be made up of other ones telling you chill man like mm -hmm. if, if you're someone who wants to chill you're on the chill algorithm if you're <laughs> someone who hustles you're on the hustle algorithm so it's yep. like this would only end up on the algorithm for someone who's already doing nothing right right and you have and you have consequences on both sides you have the people yes. who hustle constantly are always going through some form of burnout where they need to take a break because they're gonna fucking drive themselves crazy or they already have. And then you got mm -hmm. the people who don't do enough and like really use that quote as like a stepping stone to accomplish nothing and then complain about not getting anything done. And so there's, you know, there's no, sometimes it just feels like there's no happy medium, especially with something like that. Yeah. <laughs> the story of the internet. Andrea Duncan says, 
I don't want an adult anymore. I don't even want a human. I want a goat. Jump around, <laughs> jump around randomly, eat what I want, and head butt anyone who annoys me. <laughs> I like that one. I already know who Andrea is just by the quote she chose. Like, <laughs> you know, she's vaping right as we, she listens to this podcast. She's yeah. outside of like, you know, she's like, it, it just seems like the one, like that is a live, laugh, love for the person with a tattoo sleeve. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Um, Jared, do you have one that, do you have one that you love or hate? I have my own personal one that I, oh. I live by um, okay. all the time. And it's my favorite one because it helps me kind of have perspective on many things and it could be life, but it really it's for uh, comedy is uh, we, you know, when I come up with a joke, I used to tell my brother a joke. My brother and I lived together. I would be like, Hey, I got an idea for a premise for a bit. And I would tell it to him and my brother, if he was in a good mood, then we could kind of work it out. He would go, Oh, and I think you this, I could say, and then if he was in a bad mood and I was like, Hey, I got this bit. He'd be like, that's stupid. His first response, stupid. And I would always remind him, we write to edit. The only reason to write something is to edit it. It's not about getting it perfect right away. You write to edit. So getting it down and editing it, like that's the goal. So like, let's start at, I understand this is not a perfect piece, mm -hmm. but I put it down so that it could get better. So I, I do believe in we write to edit. That's my, that's that's my big one that I wrote. That's yeah. Oh, I like that one a lot. Oh, CJ, yeah, says, uh, until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Are you still talking? <laughs> <laughs> we, we write to edit, Greg. How do you like that? <laughs> you got me. You got me. What do you think? Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. I don't get it. C.G. Jung said that. Carl Jung. Mm hmm. Carl Jung. Something like that. Like that thing, that quote has done well for years and years and years because no one wants to admit they don't get it. Like it's just like a lot of people go, yeah, no, totally. Unconscious, subconscious. I, I got to make sure. It has just a lot of big words in it. So it's like, I would never, in a, I always think of all these things, like in a big group setting, would I stop the group to be like, I don't get it. And I would not, I am not strong enough. I am not confident enough. I would be like, cool, not, you know, totally. That's a good one. And then I would try and move myself from that group to go to a more fun group. Doesn't it, <laughs> it does it recommend that you make the unconscious the conscious? Yeah, until That's you make the possibility because the word unconscious, right? You're not aware of it. Yeah, it feels like it feels like somebody was at like a Carl Jung workshop or something, and they're like, "I just feel like I'm unconsciously," and he goes, "Stop right there." <laughs> until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life, and you will call it fate. And I just went, "Yes, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> you got me there." I'm glad I paid for this workshop. I like thinking of Carl Jung saying that on a Zoom. <laughs> Doing a Zoom workshop. Angela is as as Ek, 1989. Gotcha. Um, she says... So I'm behind a few episodes, but Kane, the movie theater date, yikes. Uh, I was on board. <laughs> I was on board with the silent date, but hard cringe on this one. Sounds like too much influence from Lil Squirt Squirt. Also, I used to work at a movie theater and we would have someone, we had someone living in our emergency exit stairwell at one point. Seems like a place uh dave downtown would live wow a lot of callbacks of previous episodes that jared won't get at yeah. all <laughs> it's just sitting there blankly like don't know what the fuck's going on um so i had presented two date options during the pandemic 
um, one of them was the silent date where you plan out a date the day before you do all kinds of like picnic stuff. Uh, you know, you get food like ready to, to be ordered the day before you plan out this whole date, And then when you're on the date, you don't talk to each other. You just sit in silence and try to communicate. Do you, you hate it? I hate it. It's so, I mean, I just imagine every date idea getting explained to their friends afterwards. And <laughs> <laughs> like, their friends are going to be horrified. Even yes. if they had a good time, they would ask questions that would embarrass the person who went on. Mm -hmm. So wait, you didn't say, like, you didn't talk once? Like, <laughs> so he had enough time the day before to go around to all these places to make all this happen? Mm -hmm. and yeah. It's like, so now you have too much time on your hands. Um, if it, if they did buy this bullshit, then you have to be like ready to like make the next date right away because you got nothing to do. You're just walking around the city trying to make dates for the next day. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's just like all of it. And then like, I just imagine how like, and so you don't know anything about him. Was it, I mean, do you even know how his voice sounds? Also, how do you know when it's over if somebody doesn't say something? <laughs> yes. somebody's, got go. somebody's got to go. I got to go now. Yeah, this is the, this Wait. is someone who loves themselves too much making this date because you don't think that there's any possibility that she'd be like, hey, so my friend just texted. And like, also, if you do that, you are taking a hard right, like, Hey, uh, my friend just texted. I'm sorry to ruin the silence thing, uh, <laughs> but like they gotta like ruin it. Your big dream. I don't know. There's a thing where you get too attached to ideas, and it mm -hmm. makes then you chase after it. Like I remember, I went with a bunch of friends to the Jersey Shore, and we were at the Jersey Shore, and we stayed at our friend's parents' place, and so he had all these childhood nostalgia memories of this Jersey Shore boardwalk and we're all there to get fucked up and meet women and men and it's like a bunch of growers and guys like everyone's like looking to have like the best weekend and he's like we got to do the boardwalk we got to go to the boardwalk and and he was so attached to this boardwalk idea that everyone just it kind of haunted this whole weekend because we're like and, and i kept turning to people being like you want to go to the fucking boardwalk he, but he seems to really want to do it so no one could say anything because they seemed like they really needed to do it for their like childhood shit. And if I was on the silent date, I would have the same feeling where it's like, boy, he really needs this silent thing to happen. Like what ayahuasca adventure had he been on to <laughs> convince him that this was the way? It's it's, it's too artsy, too LA, too, <laughs> I, 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 I hate it so much that I actually might leave the podcast right now. <laughs> <laughs> And it defeats the whole purpose of the date. The whole purpose is to get to know someone to see if you want to go on the second date or at least to like maybe hook uh, up or maybe kiss or how do you yeah. even know? You're like, oh, I just felt his vibe was cool. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're good. At, at that point, like you're being rated as a party planner and not a date. <laughs> He's good at scheduling things yeah. to happen without saying anything like that would be i i know i don't know what woman is into that <laughs> no there's we <laughs> have you gone on have you done the silent date with uh with your new girlfriend no we haven't done that no <laughs> I, ha I, I haven't i haven't done it she she's like she told me recently remember how well she told me recently that because i texted her and i said what do you think of this idea not necessarily trying to take her on it. It was just like, I was, you know, it was during the pandemic. I was like thinking about something I go, oh, you know, it'd be kind of like a fun, uh, you know, it'd be like kind of a weird thing to do with somebody that I, I would be curious to find if somebody would want to do it. I've never actually taken anybody on this thing. And that's she, a year, that's a year in. Yes. If, if well, that, that. Yeah, that, it wouldn't be like, it wouldn't be a fucking, it wouldn't be date one, two or three. It would be, you know. <laughs> You'd be maybe like a couple months in, but she said initially, I like that, but I, I like that you think outside the box. And then, um, we were <laughs> that means she doesn't like it. Yeah, dude, exactly. <laughs> I'm fucking like I like that you're creative. Yes. Let's go back and go to a soda fountain and really do it up. <laughs> yeah, dude. She fucking told me, she's like, I didn't like it. I didn't like it even a little bit. And I'm like, why'd you? <laughs> Why'd you say you, you liked it? She's like, because I liked you and I was hoping we'd never actually do this. 
Yeah, that date that date is for pre farts. Like if you have to have it, if you need to see that date, it's got to be before you fart in front of each other because someone, oh, man. the person has to be into you enough to keep with it, but not, mm-hmm. but uh, too afraid to tell you that it stinks. <laughs> oh man. That was good. I, uh, you know, I get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of shit for that date idea on the show, and I'm glad that it continues on with our guests. So, uh, Flying Dragon says, "Hey, Greg and Kane, just wanted to tell you guys that I've been listening to your podcast nonstop in the week or so after I discovered your podcast from Spoiler Alert, Girls Got to Eat. Uh, you're on Girls Got to Eat quite a bit, Jared. I've been on a couple times. Yeah, yeah, you've been on a lot. Yeah, they're great. Yeah, uh, nope. they." <laughs> yeah we, i mean they're, they're great we uh always have fun i i like going on there and spouting out my my theories and shit um she says i actually but she actually found us from a top comedy podcast list somewhere else while also being a girls gotta eat fan at the same time uh she just recently got to greg's episode and she's been walking her puppy uh, a five-month-old golden doodle named Smokey Bear twice a day and laughing hysterically on the walks constantly that sometimes she has to look up uh, at me and check to see if she's okay. The dog will look up at her every once in a while to check to see if she's okay because she's laughing so hard. She's afraid um, the thing that feeds her might die and then just, she would die. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I have to admit that I didn't follow the IG page right away. Um, because I have an IG page for my pup and recently just got uh, a puppy IG account. And so I had no idea how you guys looked until today. I did a Google search on you guys just because I heard your voices like every day, but had no idea what your faces might have looked like. Kane looks like how he sounds like, I think. But Greg, do you know that you, s- <laughs> do you, know that you look like Lance Bass? <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the first. When you were when you were younger, you looked like Lance Bass. Oh man, uh, I say something. If Lance ba- Bass heard the same thing, he would get to a doctor quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all I wanted to say. That's all I that's wanted it? to say. Still on episode thirty-five, so making my way up there. Thank you guys for making me laugh and looking like an idiot to my puppy. That's nice. She wanted to say you look like Lance Bass. Fucking Lance Bass, dude. Yeah, I bro. Don't, I don't understand the impetus of anyone being like, I got to email in and let someone know what they look like, even though it could be like, it, it's like not going to be right 100%. Like, no. like, if you look like someone, I don't understand the, when people are like, I... I had to tell you, you look like this person. It's like, why wouldn't you tell anyone they look like anyone? I, I never understood that. People tell right, me. Sometimes you think you're giving a compliment. Like mm-hmm. Lance well, Bass is a good looking kid. That's a He's nice a good looking guy. dude. Yeah, I, I don't think it's a, a negative thing when you're told you look like, but like, I don't know. I, I, I think we know the compliment celebrities. Like, you know, like we, mm-hmm. there are like seven of them that we all want. And <laughs> seven. everyone else that's debatable is a waste of our time. Mm-hmm. This is an old reference, but when I was young, uh, people told me I looked like Lenny from Lenny and Squiggy. Lenny and Squiggy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. From Laverne and Shirley. Mm-hmm. I know. Uh, yep. Yeah. Not a compliment. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Dude, Lenny, well, Lenny why even tell Squiggy? that to people? <laughs> it's Michael McKeon, who was in yeah. Spinal Tap. I'm yeah. looking at him. I had someone, they were like, they were like, you look like Rob Kardashian. And I was like, why would you think that's like a fun thing for me to hear? <laughs> why would you think that I'd be like, oh, thank you. Like, what do I even, what's, where, like, I don't think people think past sentence one. Like, where mm-hmm. does this conversation go now? Like, oh, thank you. I was hoping to get referenced by the uh, Kardashian that gained a thousand pounds and had a failed sock company. That was my hope. <laughs> You know, I want to be known as that guy. Like, uh, oh no, company. Yeah, he was a big. There was a point where he was getting into the sock industry. I think. Oh, and it the was, sock game is tight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he's a broker now. <laughs> <laughs> socks. Who would have think to get into socks? It's a big uh, business if you can crack it. 
people with rich parents. Damn. That's mm -hmm. that's Shit. what happened. You don't hear about like the you know the the you know the sock game at a certain point was like I was in the fashion district and I got here off the immigrant boat and mm -hmm. I knew people needed socks. And nowadays it's well, I was high and I just thought people needed, you know, like yeah. fancy sock. There's only so many socks out there. And it's like, I could put, you know, cool designs on the sides, the race car, you know, flames should, and shit. Should we try to get into the sock game and put socks on our, on our uh, red bubble? <laughs> I think we should put, don't take bullshit from fucker socks. <laughs> one black, one red, baby. I like it as a merch idea. That makes sense. Yeah. Let's get Don't Take Bullshit from Fucker Socks. Put it on there. Put it on the list. I'll, go, gonna... I'll contact my buddy Rob. <laughs> <laughs> He's like sweating it. He's like, don't do it, bro. It's not going to work out. <laughs> Reddit remix. All right. Reddit remix. Here we go. My husband said, I'm not very ladylike and offered to hire someone to teach me. Married for six years, dated for two. Back when things were normal, my husband was away from home often. Usually when he would be home, I would dress up a lot and put in a lot of effort for him. This year, he has been home for the longest stretch of time in our marriage. At first, I was putting in a lot of effort, but then staying home constantly made me feel depressed, and I started going back to normal and wearing more comfortable clothing and no makeup. I didn't realize my husband had such an issue, but yesterday, he randomly said I wasn't very ladylike at all, and after I got upset, he graciously offered to hire someone to teach me how to be. Today, he tried to say he didn't mean it as an insult, and it didn't mean he didn't think I was beautiful, but it damn sure felt like one. I don't think if this is even relevant, but my husband always looks put together and he's maintained that even in the pandemic. I did make a dramatic change to my wardrobe when we got married for, for him. So I think that's why I feel extra offended slash sensitive right now. I told my friend what he said and she told me to accept the offer and then force him to buy me all new clothes, but I really don't want to. Does anyone have any better suggestions? divorce yeah <laughs> <laughs> fuck that guy i mean what a horrible thing that you're stuck together at home all day and she decides to like just be comfortable she's in her farting phase six years mm. and then he's just like yo girl how come you're not wearing sundresses all the time <laughs> like we're fucking stuck inside what do you want from me the bigger <laughs> problem is how he went about it with this like etiquette class like emily post bullshit like he's not even telling her how he really feels he's like he's trying to say the worst thing possible in the nicest way possible which makes it even worse oh yeah like this whole etiquette class like it because she's talking about like dress and all this stuff and he's talking about etiquette like or ladylike classes like what does that even what does that even entail like what is it that got you to think that was something i needed that that would be my question Right. Yeah. And he's and always what's he looking. What's he looking for in his marriage? What is this? The 1850s? Like, yeah. You know, Eliza Doolittle? Like, what is the whole, what is the deal? Yeah. Cause he's always, and he's always put together. So he's image obsessed even when he's home. I would assume even when this dude's alone, he still gets dressed up because he's got to be with himself. So if even when he's with himself, he's put together because he needs to feel put together. If he's at home with his, with his wife, the person who he's supposed to be the most comfortable with, and he's got to be put together while they're on the couch. So she feels this, this undue pressure to be just as attractive when they're just chilling at home. Uh, I think Greg hit nailed it uh, right out the gate. I would leave him. <laughs> I would leave him for someone who accepts you. Yeah, this is, it's, 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 I would, I would just first be like, what, what made you think this? Like what mm -hmm. made you get here? Because I, I like, and she does a lot of blaming herself. She's like, I already made a change. Like, well, maybe you shouldn't have to change at all. Why is he trying to like fit, you know, make you fit his, you know, whatever vision of a wife is concerned to be like, mm -hmm. you know, at this point, what are we getting at? Yeah. He's molding her. I think 
I think he's not attracted to her anymore and he's trying to solve the problem. You think mm. so? Yeah, so then he thinks, well, maybe if she was more ladylike. Yeah, because because you, when you're with somebody all the time, they're clearly not put together all the time. So he's yeah. seen this version of her. But I think he's not attracted to her anymore and he's trying to figure out what it would be. And maybe he's like, oh, well, she hasn't been very put together lately. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe she needs yeah. to be more ladylike. And that's like a just a short term solution. That's like a one, yeah, one hour solution. Then he, you know, and especially because he's done this before, he's made this request before. So like, he's just trying to like get her to keep changing so he doesn't have to like, basically, you know, admit to the idea that he's like not there for her. Yeah, and he wants to date himself. Yeah, I don't know if there's any strong counseling. I think this dude's, I think this dude's got to look inwardly but I don't think he's going to be doing that. That's why he's putting this pressure on her. Not an easy solution for this one. I mean, not an easy living situation. Can not you imagine living in that? Like where you're like, not, you can't even put on your fucking sweats and you got to worry about someone looking at you all the time. Oh, like you're yeah. wearing around the house. Like what a garbage situation to live in. Like how, you know, self-conscious you'd feel. I would have just gone over and burped in his face. <laughs> I'd start to take it up a notch. I'd leave yeah. the bathroom door open while I was taking a shit. Yeah. I'd leave Absolutely. my dirty clothes around. I'd go, oh, you think this is bad? Wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Stake him out. Lady like oh. him out. You know, like uh, this is force his hand. <laughs> oh, that's fucking good. Oh, I love that idea. Jared, thank you for being on. I really appreciate you coming on, man. The pleasure was all mine. I, I yeah, appreciate you, you guys great. having me. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this was a lot of fun. We're going to help up with, with Kane's silent date. <laughs> Someone <laughs> had to talk him down from this idea. It's, uh, it's a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Where can people find uh, all your stuff, man? Uh, at Jared Freed on Instagram is kind of the center of my wheel. And then you up podcast and the J train podcast and the Bachelor's back. The Bachelorette is back. I'm a big fan, and I yell at the show. Oh, are you? Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. Okay, wait. Before, before you go, let's just recap. Like, we just started this last one. Okay. So, Kane and I... Oh, Kane had watched it before with his wife. I had never seen it mm -hmm. until this last one, uh, which was insane, didn't you think? It was a great season. I'm I'm a I'm a fan of movements in the market when it comes to the Bachelor and Bachelorette. So like I like when things happen. So yeah, this last season had a lot of things happening as far as the bullying was concerned, as far as uh, your first Black Bachelor, as far as uh, kind of the the edits were very strange decisions to kind of edit the Bachelor out of the Bachelor, and they made it all about kind of the the bullying going on in the house. And that's kind of why we're sitting here with Katie as the new bachelorette where she was somewhat heroic uh, to some. There's other people that think she kind of like played the game right to get the bachelorette. But I I would argue that that's really hard to know how the, the audience is gonna react to all this stuff because people love drama. And it felt like all the people in the house kind of assumed that drama would get them a following and then it just backfired on all of them and katie's the only one that was like hey i acted like a jerk there and i kind of think you're being a jerk here and we need to kind of get this over with so that we can have an actual show here and that kind of got her a lot of like credibility with the audience so it's going to be interesting to watch her and what happens is when someone's on the show whatever gets them their following they kind of like double down on that so I'm sure we're going to get a season of no bullshit. That will be the whole season. The whole season will be Katie doesn't take shit. Katie's always going to call it out. Katie's going to be against bullying and discomfort in the house. And if two people have a problem, she'll be ready to mediate, you know, right away. So I think we're going to have a lot of that this season, which I, you know, which is fun, you know, and um, I heard it ends, you know, everyone knows they've already released it. She ended it earlier than they expected. So oh, that God. kind of, so that kind of plays into this theory that like the no bullshit, you know, we don't need the, we don't need the hometown. I know who I want. It'll be a lot of that stuff. And because the bachelorette, the bachelor usually is the captain of the ship. And now with Chris Harrison not being there, even more so is the bachelorette, the captain of the ship. So 
I'm excited for the season. I and Katie is uh, I, I'm a fan of hers. I think she's great. So I, I uh, I'm excited. Are you gonna miss Chris Harrison? Um, I think he's you know I think he adds like a like besides. I think it was right to take him off. I think he sounded old. I think he sounded tone deaf when he was on that interview. Yeah. Um, I'm interested to see what happens. I don't know if it's like, I don't know if I'll miss him or not. Like, I just don't know. We've never seen a season without him, but I do think it was getting to the point with Chris Harrison. Like my brother asked the other day, he's watching survivor and he was like, Chris Harrison or Jeff Probst. I'm like the thing Jeff Probst has at his, um, the thing Jeff Probst has that Chris Harrison doesn't is a cast that doesn't make him look old. Jeff Probst can look, can age and he'll be there with the older guy versus the young. He never looks like he shouldn't be there. Chris Harrison was starting to look like he was hanging out with his kids and their friends while they got drunk being like, so who's hooking up? Like it it was like, you know, like the the look was getting worse and worse by the season. So it didn't help. Probst is a better host. Probst is much better, but I would say, but he's, he's helped by the fact that like, there is an older guy there. It's not about dating. It's about the competition. It's about the game. Like Chris Harrison's on a show about young people dating. Like if they had older bachelor, older bachelorette, which I've been saying they should have for years. I think the old, the bachelorette has always been the wrong age. The bachelorette should always be like, like a 35 year old woman with 40 men in their forties. Like I thought, I think that's a better show. That's a more realistic show. Um, But because Chris Harrison's there with a bunch of 23 year olds, it can look weird. And then Mm -hmm. he says the things he says and you go, dude, you sound very tone deaf. You don't sound like you kind of are moving with, you know, the society, so to speak. Yeah, 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 totally, totally. Yeah, you're right, awesome. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you so much, dude. I really, and, uh, yeah, we're going to, I think we're going to watch. Are watch we gonna it. Wa- are we going to watch this year? Yeah, we're going to watch. I'm on um, Instagram yelling at every episode. Dude. All right. Well then we'll tune in and watch, watch tune you in. then. Uh, be <laughs> fucking great. Uh, you can also follow the show at DTBFF podcast on Instagram, DTBFF podcast at Gmail. Uh, if you want to write in, you can also call into the show, Pat, what's that number? That number is 323-379-5544. And don't take bullshit from fuckers. Welcome. Hey there. If you like the show, you can find bonus episodes and more at our Patreon at patreon.com slash DTBFF podcast. And then rate the show five stars on iTunes because it's the right thing to do. All music by the Rating Monarchs, produced by Patrick Kelly. Patrick Kelly.